Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to another stab at this Deckard's Dream build. It occurs to me that every time I, I set something up in order to say something to camera, it makes it more difficult to sit down and just solder stuff because there's a certain amount of setup. I've got to put the, plug this in and plug that in and plug this in and get that working. So I'm probably going to do less of these, less of the to camera stuff because it's getting in the way of me actually doing it. What I will try to do is kind of add little bits from time to time. So if I come to the end of something, oh, then if I can do a little bit of talking about it and about the next stage and then leave perhaps you know, bigger changes. Like when I've finished the main board, I'll then do a video and talk about that. When I start on the synth voice cards, I'll also say something about that. You know, whatever sort of occurs, but I don't want to waste your time or my time just talking nonsense to the camera about this thing, because we know what it's about now. We're in this far enough to know that what actually has to happen is that I just need to get on with the soldering. So that's what I intend to do. So what stage am I at? What well, I did all of the surface mount, if you were if you recall, I did all of that on that side and now I've got to tackle things like the resistors. So the first pack of resistors I'm going to do is this one here. These are 1K resistors and there are 56 of them that I have to pepper over the board. The interactive build guide is slightly different. I mean, it does the 1Ks first, which is why I've decided to do these. But the layout is actually is significantly different. So I'm going to have to go through the process of finding the actual thing printed on the board and sticking the resistor into that hole. I don't think there's any shortcuts to that. You've just got to just got to knuckle down and get on with it. And then after that, I've got 46, no, 45, 100 Ks and 45, 30 Ks. I mean, these three bags themselves constitute the vast majority of the resistors on this board. Then there's lots of other little ones of different values which I'll get to before moving on to the capacitors. So I'm going to capture this as I can in some kind of time lapse so you can see what's going on. And I will let that speak for itself. Yeah. See you on the other end.
Right, a quick note about resistor numbering. I'm in the middle of putting on a large amount of resistors on the main board. And something that I found is that the numbering on the board is not particularly consistent or helpful. I'm sure it's helpful somewhere. I'm sure if you pull up the schematics, if such things existed, all of the resistors would be in a perfectly straight line, nicely ordered and would make some kind of sense. Translated to the board, not so much. You end up having you know, resistor 121 here and resistor 122 over here and then 123 over here. Sometimes you get little groupings of you know, 16, 17, 18, 19, then 20 is going to be over here with no no warning, no knowing. It's just that the numbers you're trying to find simply run out. And then you have to slowly but surely scan your way across the board to try to find where the heck the next one goes. So, you know, for people making these sorts of products out there, well, first of all, for the people who are trying to do this thing, you just need to look around the place. If you're using the interactive guide that I've shown you before on the computer, that will give you an idea of where these resistors are going to be and so where to look. So that helps. But ultimately, if you're a person who's thinking of, of selling kits of something, then you know, a nice sort of left to right consistency <laughs> resistor and component numbering would be enormously helpful. Because I don't want to be pulling up schematics. I want to be focusing on the board, putting things in where they are supposed to go. And it will just help reduce the accidental nonsense and the level of frustration that, that slowly grows as you can't find that resistor number. That was all.
So I got into a bit of a roll, right? And got all the capacitors and stuff done. Look at the state of this. You know, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. I've got just a pack of random bits and pieces to add. Things like little little connector bits and you know bits like bits like that that go on. Of course I've got all of the blinking PCI slots to do, which are well there's a lot of soldering. It's not going to be difficult. There's just a lot of it. But I thought I might just crack on and see if I can just get this main board finished. That would seem to me to be an enormous achievement along the way of getting this thing done. And there's one important thing that I discovered on the fabulous Deckard's Dream build group on Facebook, and that is the purpose of this tiny thing. This thing here that I found in sort of an envelope in the box somewhere in the bottom in a corner, very unassumingly, but this matches up with this here on the board. I'm not sure if you can see that very well. But what it does essentially is it's a little spacer that fits behind because the jack socket, which I have here somewhere, see the jack, jack socket, that's going to poke out the back and that gives it a little bit of a push forward so it meets up with the back of the case better. So it was a good job. I noticed that, I think. Somebody has been looking after me. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have missed that completely. So we're nearly there. I'm going to get stuck into these last bits and then stick all the chips on and the main board will be done. And once it's done, I'll come back and just talk about that briefly and then we'll move on to another board. Exciting times.
And we're done. It's done. I finished it. Oh, yes, I did. Look at the state of this. Look at this. It's an entire thing. Here it comes. Look at that. Look at all that stuff on there. And there's the other side. Beautiful. 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 So, how do I feel? after doing that I feel extraordinary <laughs> I feel immensely proud that I've got through all of that now was it easy yeah no yes yes no it was straightforward I mean all you're doing is placing components and soldering them in now there aren't any any manuals or user guides to this there's nothing telling you exactly what to do I mean as you know from my other kits that I've done I I like good instructions I like instructions that talk you through things I find that enormously helpful there are none there are none for this you have a list somewhere you have a you have a list and on your list you've got the component and you've got the thing that it's called on the silk screen the thing that's called that's printed on the PCB that is the reference so you can find it on the pcb you know the bit you stick it in that's it and for the vast majority of cases that's completely fine because that's really all you need and i've done kits where that's also all there is and all you need and so that can completely work it's just that when something happens that you're not entirely sure about that's when it gets a little bit tricky and for the most case, the Deco Stream Interactive Build Guide, which I have running on my little Surface Go here, this little fella, this has been immensely useful, hugely useful. It's not the same because this is revision one and I'm doing revision two, but it's close enough to give me an idea of how it goes together. And it has these images for all the bits within there. So that is essentially the build guide. As I say, it's the older version, but it's very, very similar. And if nothing else, it's shown me which bits to do in which order. So do all these resistors, all these resistors, so that you're not in that situation where you put in something that's tall and makes everything else fall out when you're trying to turn that upside down to do some soldering. So it's very helpful in establishing the order that things should go in. Now I have been taking top-down photographs as I've gone along, as I've got through a chunk of taking another photograph. So hopefully I can put those photos somewhere as high res as possible so that people who come after me will have a revision to photo of the board to follow that's assuming of course i've got everything right but i think i have i have more or less but if you'd like to see those and i haven't quite got them online yet just let me know send me a message or something and i'll i'll send them to you so were there any particular hiccups on the way not massively there was one one particular one and there's some more perhaps <laughs> i'm not sure the biggest hiccup was over these diodes these particular diodes they are what are they called Schlotty diodes and rectifiers something or other because the problem was there was two bags of them there was this bag with three sort of large chunky ones in and another bag with two smaller ones in and they were labeled the same they were for the same destination and I had no idea which ones I was supposed to put in. But a little bit of filling around on the Deckard's Dream Facebook build group sort of revealed that nobody really knew either and that nobody really cared because they're kind of the same sort of thing. They're doing the same job. So it doesn't really matter which one you put in and ultimately you can't go wrong. <laughs> so I stuck with the ones that had two because when I went to the bill of materials that I have here, it's stated that there should be two of them 
And there is two of them on the board, and yet I had a packet that had three of them in. So my assumption from that was that this was actually from the older revision that was just snuck in the box, or still attached to it. And so it seemed to make sense to me to use the one that was more accurately described by the Bill of Materials, if that makes sense. I mean, there's lots of discussion on the Facebook group over what is more up to date. Is it the Bill of Materials? Is it the schematic? Is it the... I don't know, the list of something. Is it the order that SynthCube did? I don't know. All I can do is ask. But essentially these diodes are uh, a protection circuit. If something gets too much current or something, they go bang. Or it prevents something from coming back or something. And in either case, they will both do the same job. It's just one of them is rated higher than the other. So either it makes it more safe or less safe, depending on your point of view. The problem with the jack thing here, so you've got that extra little bit that I mentioned before that goes in there behind the jack. That was easy enough. That wasn't really a problem. Obviously, once you've put this in, it's much harder to, to put your motherboard down onto some things. So I've had to stack it up on some boxes. Thing here, you can see these on the back. This one here. This is different to how it looks in the photograph on the interactive build guide. On the photograph, this is, is spiky things, whereas this is a socket. It is supposed to be what it's supposed to be, but as I say in the picture, it's more like this one, which is spiky, whereas this is a female socket. So hopefully that will reveal itself that something is plugging into there which is okay and is not expecting to find a whole bunch of pins. I'm going to discover that later. The last little niggle is, is these blue things here. I looked at them and looked at them and looked at them and tried to find some way of knowing which way around they were supposed to go. Did they have an orientation? Was it one way up or the other way up? I couldn't find anything, so I just plugged them in and went for it. Looking at them again, now that they're soldered, I found that there are numbers, numbers down here that then go around into letters. And it turns out that I've got six of them in one orientation, three of them in another. <laughs> Does that make a difference? I don't have a, I don't have a clue doesn't appear to I mean they look completely symmetrical but is that is that going to be a thing I don't know let's hope not hey oh and turns out it is important or rather it's not important which way up you put these as I said I got them different ways up what is important is that it should be a key it should be a little sliver of plastic also apparently called a fish that goes in here and there's a line here that says polarizing key and this piece of plastic should go in there apparently it's not on the bomb so how the hell are we supposed to know about it if it's not on the flipping bomb oh god gee whiz so the cards the voice cards that go in here have to go a particular way around which makes a lot of sense and the cards have a nick in it and it needs to be orientated on the little polarizing key that you stick in here and that means that you can't possibly plug it in the wrong way around which sounds like a good idea also it sounds to me like that's not entirely essential but is probably a good idea so i have the mouse number I've, I've found it discovered it through a conversation on this fabulous facebook group as i say and i'll be able to get some in for that because i've got plenty of time i've got plenty of things to do and can wait forever these things are coming so there's another note doesn't matter which way up you put these in obviously it's nice if you have them all the same way if you can notice the tiny little tiny weedy numbers on there but then you do need to add these polarizing keys along here and so if you need the part number for that then just send me a message and i can send it to you so there we go i guess that's it uh can i offer you any advice now i've got through the main board nah not really just go at it keep at it I suppose, that's all I can say. I made the decision to put all the resistors around the same way and I think that's ended up being really nice because it looks, it looks good. 
I've had no problem turning things over. It's always good to apply a bit of pressure to the board when you're soldering things with lots of pins that are sticking through because they can just come out a little bit regardless of how flat it appears. So a little bit of pressure while you're soldering, yeah, that's a good thing. Other than that, no, I mean, once you go at it, it comes together relatively fast. So now, I guess, I should attack the hardware board, the front end, the thing that has all these in it. All the sliders on to the hardware board that sits behind the front panel. I think that's going to be next because those two things can then connect together inside the case before you start doing the voice cards. So that's that's the next bit, I reckon. So there you are. I hope that was helpful. I hope that's helpful to anyone who's building this monster and seeing where you are. And I need to go and put this somewhere very, very safe. And in the meantime, go and make some tunes.